Hey everybody, welcome back to Magic Orthodoxy. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever gone to perform a magic trick, perform a card trick, and then all of a sudden you're looking at your hands and you're noticing that they're doing this. They're shaking. They're shaking and you can't stop. You can't stop. And, and no matter what you do, they're just shaking uncontrollably. It looks like they're moving a million miles a minute. And, and you're thinking to yourself, can everybody see this? Can they all see my hands doing this? What is going on? It's stage fright. It is. It's stage fright. It's nerves. It sounds like a good magic question to talk about. What is stage fright? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for being here. Got another magic question for today. Talking about stage fright, what it is, can we overcome it? What can we do about it? Uh, and came up with the question because uh, my wife and I were watching uh, Fool Us the other day. We we're watching Penn and Teller Fool Us, it was a repeat. And uh, the camera zooms in on the guy. I wish they wouldn't do this sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it's fun to see the camera zoom in because you want to see slides, you want to see what they're doing. But in this case, the guy was just shaking uncontrollably like a mile a minute. And, and once I saw it, I was like, oh, please, cameraman, pull back. Like, stop, stop doing that. And they didn't. They didn't stop doing it. They kept going back to his hands and he was shaking so bad. And my wife said, he has stage fright. Now, it is true. He, he does have stage fright. And it, it happens more often than we think. I know there's so many people that raise these questions in the forums and out on Facebook and they talk about you know, shaky hands and what you can do to it. Because we always assume that stage fright is more like butterflies in our stomach, right? It's nerves. And maybe we, we uh, think about having other attributes like um, dizziness, right? Or dry mouth. Like, you know, you, you need lots of water. You feel like you can't, like your tongue's really uh, dry or, or you feel hungry. And certainly those are also attributes of stage fright. But as a magician, we're thinking, why do I have stage fright? I have performed on stage before. I've performed for audiences before. I performed for X people before. Why is it happening now? Like what's going on? So I want to talk about that. Talk about whether uh, it could go away, right? Does it go away? Uh, it can. I mean, I'll just, I'll just say it right now. It can, it can go away, but it doesn't always. There are people that have been performing for 20, 30, 40 years that'll still tell you they still get stage fright. They still get stage fright. I get asked all the time. I get asked all the time from people if I ever get nervous going back up on stage. And to be truthful for the first couple of years, yes, I always got nervous. And it's only gone away more and more as I've been on stage more and more. And it's taken, it's taken years. It's taken years to get just as comfortable on stage as I am uh, not on stage. But let's talk about stage fright, talk about where it comes from, why it's happening to you, okay? So uh, think about think about being on stage, okay? So just think about it for just a second. And when we say stage, that it can still be close up, right? It's, it's, we're not talking about a physical stage, okay? But we're talking about performing, all right? So when you perform, you are standing alone in an open place with nowhere to go, right? Nowhere to hide. You're defenseless. And there's a group of people all watching you. That scenario is a fight or flight situation. It is. Think about it. It's true. Uh, consider an antelope out in an open field with nowhere to go nowhere to hide, and a group of lions watching them. That's what it feels like when a magician starts doing card tricks, right? It's the same, it's the same thing that's happening. So anyone finds themselves in that situation, it's the same as being uh, surrounded by predators, right? Predators are surrounding you. They're, predators always hunt in packs. They always go after the, the one that's alone by themselves. They're the easiest prey. Some, some place where it's out in the open, where there's no cover, your brain is wired to be afraid in that moment. And what's happening in that moment is your hypothalamus, 
is triggering the pituitary gland to release a hormone, ACTH. It makes your glands shoot adrenaline into your blood, okay? Your neck, your back tenses up. You might feel like the, you have this need to slouch. Your legs and hands are shaking because your muscles are preparing themselves. That's what's happening. Your digestion even shuts down because your body is trying to deliver all the nutrients and oxygen to your muscles and your vital organs because your body is like, I don't know what's gonna happen, right? So you also get dry mouth, like I said before. You also get that feeling in your stomach, the, the butterflies, right? Sometimes your pupils even dilate. I've seen performers talk about how, uh, you know, they're playing guitar and now they can't read their sheet music. It's like, I can't, like it's blurry. Or you're looking down at cards and it's just like, where'd my force card go? Like, where, what am I looking at, right? You you're, you're kind of lose uh, your vision for anything up close. So yeah, uh, rapid, rapid heartbeat, right? We said that, dry mouth, tight throat, trembling hands, trembling knees, trembling lips, stuttering, right? Your voice can tremble, uh, sweaty, you're extra sweaty, cold hands, nausea, just an, un, an uneasy feeling in your stomach, you're having your vision change. So shaky hands, if that's the only thing <laughs> that's going on, uh, consider yourself lucky. Some other people who have experienced stage fright, they experience maybe what they would say would be worse situations, right? Worse worse uh, results. So, and I know that all sounds bad. It, uh, it does. It all sounds bad. And if it hasn't happened to you, consider yourself lucky, right? <laughs> Just say, wow, you know, you're lucky. But I think stage fright happens to most of us. It happens to most of us. And for most of us, it takes a long time for it to go away, if ever, if ever. And I would even offer that it's not necessarily bad. Stage fright isn't necessarily bad. I can still remember going out on stage and beginning with this feeling of stage fright, which is really just nerves and excitement working together, right? You got nerves because you're worried, but you're also excited. Like you've been waiting all day for this event. You've been waiting weeks, right, for this event, and now it's here, so you're excited. So you're nervous and you're excited. Those things are you're working together. Do you want that to go away? I don't think you do. I don't think you do. It's, it's not bad to be excited about something that you care about, right? Because uh, what would the opposite be? The opposite would be, hey, I've got a show tonight and uh, I can take it or leave it, right? You're just gonna go in casual and just kind of like, eh, whatever happens, happens. Like, I don't know that you want that approach either. I mean, you wanna be excited. You wanna be looking forward to it. So a little bit of stage fright isn't bad. So. Why does it seem to happen sometimes and not others, right? Because you'd think, well, shouldn't this be consistent? Why does it happen sometimes and not others? Uh, usually it happens in moments where you care more. Think about it. And think about when it's happened to you. Some people, they can perform all day long for their friends and family, but strangers, they get stage fright because they care. They care about those strangers because they want to impress them. Sometimes that's the opposite. Say, you know what, I can perform for strangers all day long, but as soon as I perform for my sister or my brother or my dad, I get nervous. Well, yeah, because you care more about what those people think, right? Sometimes, I've seen this at magic conventions. You know, you're some hotshot magician, and back home, everybody loves you, and you're great, but you see a, a, a famous magician you see somebody that you respect and look up to and they say, hey, show me what you're working on. And you start to do it and then you start shaking and you're like, what's going on? It's because you care. That's why it's happening. If you're shaking, it just means you care, okay? It means you care and that's not bad either. Like I said, you don't want that to go away. You wanna care, okay? So whether it's friends or family or peers or strangers, it's not necessarily bad. But are there some things you can do that'll help with stage fright? Absolutely. Number one, chiefly, you'll hear this time and time again, practice. Usually when people say practice, they say practice forwards and backwards. Practice your tricks so that you can do them in your sleep. The more you practice, the more you have a chance of <laughs> overcoming stage fright. I'm not saying it's gonna go away, 
because I'm sure those people that perform on Penn and Teller have practiced a million times. But because they're in that moment and they're excited, they've been looking forward to it, and they care, right? They care about impressing Penn and Teller. They care. So that, it, it creeps back, right? But practicing is gonna be your number one, your number one uh, weapon against stage fright. And practicing live. Not just practicing in your living room or at home, practicing live. The more you practice that trick in front of strangers, the more you'll be able to do that trick in front of strangers without stage fright, okay? You're practicing in the situation that you're actually gonna be in, okay? So I know that can be tough. Uh, Number two, I would say always just uh, focus on people that uh, you're comfortable with. So if you're performing for some people, and you find that one spectator is just a little bit more friendly, makes you relax a little bit more, maybe focus on them, keep coming back to them. If you see where your parents are sitting or maybe your brothers and sisters out in the audience, look at them, look at them and you'll feel calm because those people, you love them and they'll make you feel calm. If something happens on stage and it's funny, laugh. If someone in the audience says something funny, laugh. Laughter is a way to calm yourself, okay? Laughter will actually help you relax. Um, Try to look as good as you can. Dress nice, feel nice. Uh, Go out there and put your best foot forward. If you feel like you look good, it'll help your confidence, okay? Um, Food is definitely uh, a ritual before stage. Lots of magicians, uh, performers, musicians, stand-up comics, actors will tell you that they have a ritual with food. Uh, limiting caffeine is probably best. Limit caffeine because of, you know, just the shakes that caffeine can give you. But eat healthy that day. Exercise that day. Make sure you get adequate sleep the night before, right? The, the more healthy your lifestyle is, we'll definitely have a, a result on that. Also, just staying positive. You know, staying positive. Just telling yourself, this is going to go well. This is going to go well. I'm not worried. It's gonna be fine. Close your eyes and picture it going well. Close your eyes and picture yourself doing the trick and then picture the audience laughing and cheering and applauding, okay? Don't beat yourself up. Don't say, oh, this is gonna suck. Oh, this is gonna go terrible. Oh, this, this is so bad. I, I, I'm no good, I suck at this. You know how many times I see magicians introduce themselves in a forum and they start by saying, I'm a, I'm a crappy magician. I suck, I'm not that good. We automatically give negative words to ourselves and we do, we do this everywhere, not just magic, okay? If somebody tries to pay you a compliment, the first thing you usually say is, no, pff, no, I'm not, I'm not that good. Those negative words that you speak to yourself, they affect you, okay? Tell yourself positive things, look in the mirror and tell yourself positive things. Encourage yourself, okay? Practice breathing, practice trying to be calm, take a walk. Sometimes you'll see performers backstage jumping up and down. They'll jump up and down and they'll shake their arms, shake their legs, shake their heads, right? They'll shake their cheeks back and forth. It's an exercise. Getting those nerves out, okay? Do some jumping jacks, do some push-ups, whatever it takes, right? Do whatever you can to ease yourself and feel like that anxiousness is kind of leaving your body. And then when you're out there on stage, or even when you're doing close-up, look at people in the eyes. When you look at somebody in their eyes, you make eye contact with them, you are telling your body, these people are friends, okay? What we, we tend to avoid eye contact with strangers, we tend to avoid eye contact with enemies, we avoid eye contact with people we don't like. Okay? So when you make eye contact with someone and you look directly at them, they not only feel that, right? they feel you looking at them, but it relaxes you. It'll naturally relax, your, relax you. And then I just you know, say, be yourself. Be yourself. Act natural. Be yourself. Uh, that, that's, really, that's really the best advice uh, I could give you. And, and, and really, over time, eventually, you know, uh, it'll go away. You know what, another, another thing that uh, I know, another little trick is uh, start with something easy. That's why, um, that's why speech, people who deliver speeches, 
you know, they're going to do public speaking and they always say that public speaking is scary. Uh, that's why public speakers always start with a joke. They start with a joke because it's easy and they haven't yet got into their material. And so they feel like if I can say this easy joke, that's funny and the audience laughs, they laugh, I laugh, it kind of releases the tension and then I can start. Same with magic. If there's something you can do that's easy, that you can just do in your sleep or a couple and, and maybe a joke to throw in there, that if you do that first, instead of jumping right into your like hardest, most difficult slight trick, right? Start with something easy. That'll help set the tone for everything and it'll help create a relaxed atmosphere. And like I said, just keep in mind, uh, stage fright, it, it's, it's usually worse at the very beginning, right when you walk out on stage, right as you're going up the steps, right as the lights come on, right as the curtain pulls aside. But the longer you stand there, the longer you talk, take some deep breaths, laugh, smile, have fun, you'll start to notice that the stage fright will go away, your routine and the things that you practiced will kick in, and before you know it, you'll be walking off the stage and you'll be thinking to yourself, wow, it's over, like it was so quick. <laughs> I can't even remember what I did up there. I hope it was good, <laughs> right? It'll just, it'll just all become uh, a blur and then people will come up to you afterwards and just tell you how great you were because you were, you were great, okay? So I hope that helps. And uh, this is the great thing about the internet is we have advice. So maybe you have some advice. Maybe you have something to say or a story uh, that you could tell or maybe uh, a, an easy hack, right? To get past stage, stage fright, let us know. Let us know down below uh, if you know if something you've done works for you. I'm sure we would all love to hear it. You know, there's countless articles and videos about stage fright. So, hey, if you've got some, if you've got some remedy, like warm tea or something, <laughs> listening to Enya music, whatever it is, right? Whatever it is, uh, put a nice comment down below, and I'm sure we'd all benefit from it. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for submitting these magic questions. I read them all, and I will try to get to all of them. And uh, yeah. See you guys next time. Bye.